terrible shock to all the people, especially to Hamas people. If you are going to kill the Palestinian civilian, you have to expect that you are going to drink from the same poison. An American Jew had given Hamas its motivation to strike at the heart of Israel. After that massacre, it is allowed for everybody to attack any Israeli citizen or military. Jihad is waged, and now all of Israel is fair game. Ikia Ayash prepares to heed the call. With scores of young zealots ready to volunteer for martyrdom, Ayash has developed a series of sophisticated and deadly suicide bombs. He did it slowly, slowly in his house. He knew how to build it, and he knew how to build a car bomb. Hamas would soon have its revenge. Their revenge was in Afula in the April 6, 1994. 19-year-old Raid Zakarna volunteers for the mission. Seeking a target, he enters the Israeli town of Afula. His car has been rigged by the engineer with 50 pounds of explosives. April 6, 1994. 19-year-old Palestinian Raid Zakarna is about to make his bid for martyrdom in the fight against Israel. He drives his explosive rigged car into the Israeli town of Afula. Zakarna had detonated himself next to a bus full of passengers, killing nine. A group called the Izzedine Al Qassam Brigade takes responsibility for the suicide bombing. Izzedine Al Qassam is the military wing of Hamas. They built some kind of branches organization, political, and also the military branch. The Shin Bet pressures their informants for information. Their investigation reveals an association between the Izzedine Al Qassam Brigade and a mysterious young engineering student. And then we heard the name of Yehi Ayash, the man who prepared the bomb. Seven days later, on April 13th in the town of Hadira, Ayash strikes again. A suicide bomber with a bag of explosives detonates himself inside a city bus. Israel found itself under severe suicide attack in a period of time of one week. At that time, it was a very unique phenomenon. Again, the name of the young engineering student surfaces inside Israeli intelligence. Yehi Ayash was the man who prepared the bomb. The suicide bombings are the first of their kind in Israel. Ayash has rewritten the rules. Ichi Ayash was the mastermind of the new phenomenon of suicide attacks. Ayash's strategy for terror is aimed directly at Israeli civilians. The idea that there is a guy that he's decisive and he uh, is ready to do anything, including killing himself, just in order to hurt you, this notion is frightening. Any society recoils with a lot more fear and horror when the victims of violence are, uh, are civilians, men, women, children, people going about their daily lives. As anxiety and fear spreads throughout Israel, the Shin Bet puts all their efforts into preventing the next attack. Gideon Ezra, deputy director of Israel's Shin Bet, is a lead investigator in the hunt for Ayash. He worked on it a lot of time, with a lot of people, coordinating with the army, with the police. He was uh, wanted number one. With information tying Hamas and its bomb maker Ayash to the suicide attacks, the Shin Bet compiles names of anyone with links to Hamas. The Shin Bet part is number one to collect information. Ah! Oh, look at me. And this information you collect by all means that you can. As lead interrogator for the Shin Bet, Michael Kobe is feared by Palestinian militants. We arrested about 500 uh, members of the Hamas organization. We interrogated 250 approximately. 
The interrogations reveal Ikea Ayash is not just a bomb maker for Hamas, but a major player in the organization. Beginning of 1992, they upgrade him and put him as one of the commanders of the Ezzed Din al-Qassam, the military branch of Hamas. We saw from act of terror to act of terror that he was more and more expert. For Yitzhak Rabin, it was hard to pronounce Arab names, so he said, let's call him the engineer. The man now known simply as the engineer is the most feared man in Israel. This is the man that we have to put all our efforts in order to know who is this man, why he is doing, and what's his background. The Israeli border patrol is put on high alert in neighborhoods Ayash is known to frequent. A Hamas cell in Nablus is soon uncovered. With information extracted from arrested cell members, the Israeli security forces begin to close in. He was located in one of the places in the old city of Nablus, in the market, very close to uh, the middle of the city. Israeli forces immediately launch a raid in the old city. And we were very close to him. It's a very um, tiny area and um, he escaped into the people. As Ayash goes deep underground, Prime Minister Rabin puts added pressure on the Shin Bet to find him. With angry right-wing religious groups demonstrating on the streets of Israel, the bombings seriously threaten the peace process negotiated with Oslo. What the terrorists like to do by committing the terrorist attack is not specifically kill one person or three person or three thousand person. They would like to create anxiety within the target society. Well, all the pressure came on the Prime Minister uh, Yitzhak Rabin. Yet Rabin remains undeterred and faithful to the Oslo Accords. On May 18th, Rabin completes the withdrawal of Israeli troops from Gaza. On July 1st, 1994, Chairman Yasser Arafat arrives in Gaza, victorious. With Gaza sealed and under the sole jurisdiction of the Palestinians, the Israelis must rely on the Palestinian Authority to track the engineer. We asked from the Palestinian Security Service to f find to find him to help to arrest them. Instead, Gaza becomes the perfect refuge for the engineer. It's an area which everyone knows everyone. And every stranger who comes in is suspicious straight away. An area where putting an undercover shin bed operative would be extremely risky. The shin bed shares their intelligence information with Rashid Abu Shabak from the Palestinian Authority in the hopes that their counterparts will cooperate in the hunt for the engineer. Rashid Abu Shabak is now at the head of the intelligence of the Palestinian Authority in Gaza Strip. Of course, it's not a secret that he is wanted to the Israeli intelligence. We are a newly established authority and for the first time the Palestinian people welcome the Palestinian Authority to govern them. Arresting Hamas is a priority for the Shin Bet, but not for the Palestinian Authority. We did not want to give the Palestinian people the impression that we are only here to arrest members of the Hamas. With no cooperation from the Palestinian Authority in the hunt for the engineer, Israelis brace themselves.